Hello, welcome. This is going to be the first and perhaps only installment in this new series that I'm going to do um, called Drunk Programming, where basically we find a fun idea online and then we, while consuming an alcoholic beverage, um, execute on that project idea. Now, the, the fun part here is that we cannot reference the internet at all and other than for things like syntax errors because I don't want to get stuck and delay the video because of um, some silly language specific syntax error. So um, we can't reference the internet for like design decisions, um, program design, architecture, anything like that. It's going to be us for to design an architect and execute our project idea. We'll only reference the internet for things like I said, like syntax or other small technical errors that would um, like, I don't know the word, inhibit our progress on, on this project idea. So I think for this first one, we're going to do something relatively simple. We're not going to build it out too much because I don't want this video to be an hour and a half long. I want this to be like maybe 20, 20, 30 minutes. Um, and basically, I'm just going to come up with a project idea and then we'll program it together. Of course, since it's called drunk programming um, while consuming some alcoholic beverage. So I saw this idea. I thought this would be fun. So we're just going to build, I think, in this episode a really simple chess game. Um, nothing too complex, we're not going to build an engine or anything like that, just something that will allow you um, to play chess with a friend locally on your computer. So why don't we go with this idea of build a chess game. I've got an empty VS Code project open um, and eventually, originally I was going to do a to-do list which is why the folder is called to-do list but that's kind of boring so um, why don't we build chess instead. I think that's a little more interesting, a little more challenging also. So I don't think we're gonna, like, cause I don't want this video to be so long and so theoretical. I just want this to be something that like maybe um, beginner programmers or intermediate programmers can watch and maybe um, try the challenge along with me and sort of compare how I like approach this problem as opposed to how they would approach this problem. And also, if they're stuck, they can reference my video perhaps to get unstuck or, or find an idea or two that maybe was stopping them from completing the project. So again, this video, we're making chess, very simple chess game, not super robust, not an engine, just simple chess that you can actually play. And um, yeah, we're going to do that while drinking. And I'm going to set a timer maybe for 30 minutes to get this done at least in a basic form, and then in future videos, maybe we can either improve on this or start a new, maybe a little more challenging or robust project. Um, maybe with each video, we'll do something a little more complex, but for this one, we're just going to start with something simple, with a bare-bones chess game, um, something that you can play locally with a friend, and just, yeah. Okay, so, I think the first thing that comes to mind to me is let's set a game plan. So generate a board, put pieces onto board, allow turns for white and black, move pieces from and to squares based on moves specified by current player. So this is basically the steps we need to create a simple chess game. So we need to generate a board um, put the pieces onto that board, um, have turns, so um, white can only move a white piece on white's turn, and black can only move a black piece on black's turn, and sort of have white, black, white, black turns as the game progresses to keep track of whose turn it currently is. And those pieces, when a player specifies a move, you need to be able to move a piece from one place to another. And I think for simplicity, We'll have no move checking. So um, we'll just assume that the player is always going to play a valid move. And also no checkmate and game condition or castling. So when you checkmate, it'll basically be up to the players to say, okay, the game's over. Like the game itself is not gonna tell you that the game is over. Um, you will be aware enough to make that choice on your own and end the game um, by closing out the program. And no castling because that's sort of complicated to program. 
So again, this will be sort of, it will allow you to play chess, but it'll be up to you to determine if a move's valid and when the game's over. And also castling, since it's just a bit complex, because there's queen and king side castling, um, and you'd have to check if the castle is valid or not. Um, like, we we'll just won't worry about that right now. So just a very bare bones chess game is what we're gonna work out today. Okay. So let's just sort of take this um, one at a time. So we'll say like step one, generate board. Step two, put pieces onto the board. Step three, create some sort of turn system. And step four, we will move pieces from the two squares based on specified moves by the players. Okay, so let's start with step one. Generate the board. So we can think of a board, I think, is just like a 2D array, right? We have an array, or in Python, a list, where each element of that list is another list. Right? So we have an array of arrays, basically, or a list of lists, depending on whatever terminology you want to use. And there's some very like Pythonic way to generate a 2D array, but it's annoying and I don't feel like looking it up, so we're just going to say um, board is equal to and a chess board is 8 squares by 8 squares because a total of 68 squares. So we're going to say board is equal to on the list of zeros times eight, right? So now we're going to have an element with eight zeros, right? And if we run the program, let's go to view terminal, and we'll say py chess.py for item board and item and is equal to, we'll just say like this for now. So now you see we have a list of eight elements where each element is a zero. So now we'll say for i in range length of board. And the reason we're changing this for the four item and board syntax is if you reference something like with that syntax, if you say like item is equal to now a sub list, it's it doesn't actually update the list itself. We have to use like the index of the list to actually update the list itself. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully those of you who have experience with Python will know what I mean. So we'll say board of i is equal to, let's just say something like this, times eight. And again, we're gonna use less syntax, okay? So first we initialize a 1D list of zeros. And then we go through each item and change it so that item becomes, again, a sublist of eight of these. So we'll now say four row in board, four column in board, print call, and it's equal to this. And then print this at the end of each row. I think this is working. Let's just try this. Yeah, so you see now we have a board of eight rows, right? And each row of the board has eight columns, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So now this 2D matrix will represent our board, an 8x8 chess board. Okay, right? So now we've completed step one. We have created a board, which is essentially just a 2D matrix, an 8x8 2B, 2D matrix. Okay, fantastic. So each row is a sublist, or each item of our 2D list is another list with eight elements in it. And this will be, each element will be one of our squares. So this would be like A8, for example. This would be A1, B8, B1, so on. So why don't we, while we're doing this, generating our board, why don't we print some letters and numbers to actually help um, like the player sort of visualize the board and and sort of denote which pieces belong to where. So let's say, let's create a function called def print board. And let's just say it takes in a board as a parameter. And we'll create this out here. Def print board board. For row and board, right? We'll just say print, and we want numbers. So for i in range, and enumerate board. Basically, what enumerate does is it numerizes each element in your list. So then we have the best of both worlds. We can reference not only the index of where we're at in our traversal, we can also reference the item that we're at, like the element that we're at using this row syntax instead of saying like board of i, for example. And that's what enumerate does. It enumerates each item in the list as you're traversing through it. So we can say print row. And let's print also i plus one and is equal to this. Okay, and then let's just say Let's call the function down here. Print board, and then we'll pass it board. Okay, so now you see we have our board printed out, and we have the row number right of each element. Okay, so now something interesting here, right? If we look up like an actual chessboard, let's go to chess.com. And then let's just say like play computer. You see that the numbering doesn't go from one to eight, right? You see this? It doesn't go from one to eight, it goes from eight to one, right? So instead of I plus one here, why don't we say eight minus i? And now you see it starts at eight and it goes down to one. Now, if you're new to programming, you may wonder, right? Right, this is the first row. So why, this is eight minus one, right? But the thing is, lists and arrays in programming are zero indexed, okay? So this is eight minus zero in the first iteration, not eight minus one. And then here it's eight minus seven because the seventh index is the eighth element since it starts at zero. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So then what we wanna do is we don't have to do this inside of our other loop. We can do this after our other loop. It's now we want each of our files of our board to be called a file, right? And let's go back to this chessboard here see it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So this would be like the A file. This would be the V file. So the files are basically the columns. So this is the A column, B column, C column, so on. Okay. So now let's print these for the player as well. Now we're gonna do some formatting here. So this is one, two, three, four. So let's say, print, this is going to be kind of messy. 
let's say empty space times four plus a and let's see what that looks like so we need an extra space in here and you see now we have an a printed underneath our board which will help the player know where they're at um, when they want to make a move okay what if we do a six let's just see what that looks like I like the other one okay so now how many spaces we need we need one two hmm Let's just keep this like this for now. Plus times three plus B. Maybe it should be five each time. Yep. And then we can just copy this and say C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay. So now we have, right? We have and let's just clean this up a little bit. Let's say four call in 4j call and enumerate row so I'm going to iterate through the row which is another list which is why we can iterate through it we can say print call and is equal to an empty space let's just say and then at the end of each row we want to print just a new line Okay, and then this needs to be brought back to and then we would also update all these to be two. These actually all need to be two. Okay, so now we have our board printed, and this is sort of bothering my OCD. So why don't we say Let's make this, let's just clean this up a bit. And then let's do this. I just want this board to be symmetrical. So this needs to move one over and this needs to move two over. So four times four. Let's make sure that looks good. Four times three. Okay. And then that needs to be moved one over. So then these all just become three. Just like that. And this just makes it look a little prettier. So 
And then let's replace this with spaces because this will become occupied with pieces once we do the next step. So now we have an eight by eight board where our row is numerated and our file or column also has a um, like a marker to show you which move or which square you're on when you want to make a move. And we're already at 20 minutes, so this is probably going to be like a 45 minute video. Okay. So, the song is really loud. You turn that down. So now we're done with step one. We have this nice print board, nice print board function, not a method that will generate a board and um, whatever we want it to. So let's do step two and put pieces onto a board. Okay. So we could have a whole bunch of for loops and say like pawn generator, ruck generator, knight generator. But then we have that extra logic to each one for like white and black. So what if, right? Hear me out. Hear me out. We have an A pieces map, which is going to be a hash table. And if you're unfamiliar with the hash table, they're basically just key value pairs. So you have a key with the corresponding value. And then um, we can just iterate through our keys and values to generate the pieces. So also the the benefit of this is it's like time and space complexity is better than if we did this all manually with for loops. And if you're also not familiar with time and space complexity, I'm not going to explain that here, but it is good to know. So I'd recommend looking it up once you're a little farther into your programming journey. So let's say like, um, let's just name each piece like we would in standard chess notation. So let's say like, white and black pieces here. So let's have like a white pawn. And then we'll have a white knight. And again, we're using N because that's standard test notation. N is knight. Then we have a white bishop, right? We have a right rook. For a comma. We have a white queen. And we have a white king. Yes? Okay, now let's look back at our handy dandy board. Right? So our pawns for white are on the second row. So let's start with the pawns for our white pawns. Now, the, tr the thing to remember here is this in our 2D array is actually going to be at what index? We're denoting it as 2 with this number here, but it's, it's actually at the 2 index in our list, in our 2D array, in our matrix. No, it's the sec, because remember our, our first row in the matrix is actually this row. Right? This has the 0 index, so let's count. We have 0. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So our white pawns are actually on the sixth row, right? So six, and then it's an eight byte matrix, so our pawns are gonna be from six, zero, which is this, right? The first column of our sixth row to the seventh column of our sixth row. So all of these are gonna be our pawns. So we have six, zero, right? And then we can just copy this. Six one, six two, six three, six four, six five, six six, six seven, right? Six one, six two, six three, six four, six five, six six. And six seven, and this will actually be like this. Okay, 
Okay. So this is all the squares or white pawns you're going to be on, right? The knights, this is the seventh index row, right? The eighth row, but the seventh index, the first index, and the sixth index, right? So seven, zero, or seven, one, and seven, six. Okay. Bishops, that seventh row, second index. Our seven index row, second index column, and fifth index, seven index row, fifth index column. So both of these are going to start with seven, right? Zero, one, two, and seven, five, yes. Okay, right rooks, seven, zero, seven, seven. Queen, seven, zero, one, two, three. And since we know the king is right next to the queen, that will be seven, four, right? So these are all of our white pieces and their corresponding coordinate positions in our 2D matrix. So now why don't we just copy this, right? And we'll change this to B to correspond to black for our player. And thinking about this now, this will actually come in handy later. Now, what do we need to change for this? Do we need to change our column positions or do we need to only change our row positions? We only need to change our row positions, right? Because we're symmetrical as black. The black work is wherever the white work is is starting. It's just the row changes. So we can keep all of our Y coordinates. We only have to change the X coordinates or our columns, or sorry, our rows. So this will be the zero, my computer is dying. Okay. So this will be this, like this. So all the sixes will become ones, all the sevens will become zeros at least for our row values, not our column values. Okay, so now we have for both players, white and black, they're all the pieces, right, and their corresponding positions. So we should have eight pawns, Two knights, two bishops, two rooks, one queen, and one king. And then we have the corresponding row and column positions, which we can now use to put the pieces onto the board. Okay? So that was step one. And let me put a comment here that actually says step two, put pieces onto the board. Okay? So now we have all of our mappings. We have our black pieces and our white pieces. Now let's use these to actually put our pieces onto the board. And why not, let's just make this a function, put pieces like this, board. And then we'll call it here, put pieces board. Print board, board. And we can remove this call of that. I think we already did up there. Okay. So now let's use these two maps to actually put these pieces onto the board. So white pieces, black pieces. Four piece square in white pieces map dot items. Okay, so now we're gonna loop through this map where piece corresponds to the key 
and square corresponds to the value of that key. So we know that square, right, is going to be a list now because the value for every piece is a list. So now we need to iterate through each of those lists as we're generating pieces. Right, so we say for, for position, and let's call this squares. And we can say for square in squares. And we're gonna say board x, y equals square zero, square one. Right, so now x, for example, on the first iteration through this white piece key, x is going to be 6, y is going to be 0. But now let's think about this, right? Sorry, I'm getting spammed on WhatsApp right now. Hang on. Okay, the spamming stopped, so I can continue now. So, right, so x and y, right, we consider this our row and column. Yes. Actually, this will work now. I'm thinking of a problem in the future. Let's move on. Okay, we'll address that when we get to it. So, x, y is square zero, the x coordinate, the y coordinate for each item in our piece list, for each key value pair. So, right, board of x, y is equal to piece. Right? And then I'll show you the output of this, and that will help you perhaps think of it better. And we'll just change this instead of white pieces map to black pieces map. Right? So let's do this again. And look at this. 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 Our pieces are being generated. We have our black rook, black rook, white rook, right rook, right pawns, white knight, white knight, white bishop, white bishop, white queen, white king, black queen, black queen, and the only issue now is our formatting. So instead of one, two, three, what if we just say? So what if we make four or five? No. One, two. And we'll just have this as we originally had it. This is part of what comes with drug programming. Things you change actually ended up being better the way you had them originally. Right? So now we need to redo this to I think this was three and then two. Yeah. Two, 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 two. All right. So A1 has a rook on it, and A and D1 has a queen on it. Let's reference our board. A1, rook, D1, queen. So our pieces are generating now correctly onto the board using that those dictionaries or hash tables we created. Okay, so now we've done steps one and two. We've generated a board, and we've also put pieces onto the board. Now we need to do this thing called allow turns for white and black. Now a fun little summer job I did two, oh, two years ago now, wow. Also, we're progressing to another one of these. Is we made a tic-tac-toe game. And the way that we determined whose turn it was in the tic-tac-toe game 
is first of all, we used a while loop. So we can say wow true, right? This is just gonna, and we'll just say step three. And what did we say this was? Allow turns for white and black. Allow turns for white and black, right? So we have this variable called current turn and we set it originally off. Let's start this at one, right? And we can use this mod, this operator. If you've taken a programming course at university, you probably know this. If not, you may not, but it's called modulo, right? And it's basically X modulo Y returns the remainder of X divided by Y. So four modulo three, right, would be the remainder of four divided by three. So three goes into four one time, right? And then it has a remainder of one. So four modulo three would return one, right? And we can use this, right, to determine whose turn it is. So we can say per player, let's just initialize this as an empty string. If cur turn, we're gonna use some Python syntax here. If not, actually, if cur turn modulus two, cur player is equal to white. Else, cur player is equal to black. So let's just show you this right here. Let's say one mod two gives us one so this first turn this first iteration while current turn is one which is what we're starting it out to be this first time the loop executes we're going to do this if condition and basically if you say if something if some expression means that it returns a value that's not zero so this operation the first iteration that this loop makes which is going to be current turn is going to be one so if one modulus two is not zero this will execute, right? Since this is not zero, this is gonna say the current player is white and white plays first in chess, right? Now let's say that we white has played their first turn. We increment current turn to be two. Right? At the end of each turn we increment current turn. Now let's change this to two mod two. That's zero, right? So then this will be, so the second time this loop executes, it will be black's turn. Similarly, three mod two is one, which is not zero, which means this will execute. So the third time this loop executes, this will be white. And then, right, four modulus two doesn't have a remainder. So basically, every other turn is gonna be black. Right, it's gonna go white, black, white, black, white, black. That's how we're gonna do this. Okay. Okay. I'll take a sip. Okay, now we know a way to determine whose turn it is. Now how can we make, like allow a player to specify a move, which is step four. Let's do this in our loop, right? So basically in chess, when you wanna make a move, and the simplest way I can think of this is let's say the player is going to give us the square whose piece we want to move. So let's say we want to move this pawn. Let's say we want to play this pawn here, right? We want to do that. We want to make that move. We'll say let's move the piece from C2 to C4, right? So we need to give the starting position of the piece we want to move and the ending position of the piece we want to move, right? Get starting position of the piece we want. To move. Okay. And let's just do some spacing here to make this nice. So starting square is equal to input, and this is our way of getting input from the terminal in Python. Enter the square whose piece you would like to play. 
And let's just help the player out. Let's say, like, for example, A1. Okay, so CLS, declare the terminal. Let's run this again. And let's say at the start of each move, we print the board and pass it board. And before this executes, we want to put pieces. Put pieces board. Right. So at the start of each turn, It says enter the place you square you'd like to play right and this is where that problem I was going to talk about earlier comes up so let's let's write a little more code and then worry about that so let's say like so let's say start X start Y is equal to starting square 0 and we're just gonna assume they're always entering valid input Right, and let's just say print start x, print start y. Right, okay, so let's say we entered like a1. This will print us out a1 here. You see that? Now, the thing about chess notation versus 2D matrix notation and programming is A1. A represents the column. One represents the row. The opposite is true in programming. So let's say like we say board of I, J. I represents the row, J represents the column. So in chess, the first coordinate you provide corresponds to the column, but in programming, the first coordinate you supply represents the row. So our X and Y are actually going to be swapped. So A1 is actually going to be 1A, right? And furthermore, since we start at 1 here or 0 here for our indexes, A1, right, is actually going to correspond to the XY coordinate 7, 0. A1 is 7, 0, not 0, 1 or 1, 1. Okay, right? So let's create another map to correspond our file or our column notation to column notations. Let's do it the same place we do this. Let's say column map, right, is equal to this. Let's say A, 0, because it's 0 and next 1, and we can just C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay. And again, like I said, Y and X are swapped. So start Y, start X is equal to this. And again, let's use our table now. So start x is equal to call map start x. And then let's print start x start y. And there's one more issue we have to address, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's say A1, right? And this is a string since we're getting in this input, so we need to kind of turn this into an integer since our keys are integers. 
let's say A1. Yep. And we actually need to fix this. That was actually right. I'm so sorry. And let's see what the error that was giving us was. Actually needs to be that. That's what the issue was. A1, right? It becomes zero. This needs to be that. Right? A1 becomes right. The zero width column of the first row. Now A1, let's think about that. Let's say this corresponds, and let's do it like this so it makes more sense. Start Y and is equal to this. Print start X. A1 becomes zero, one. A is the zero with column of the first row. And we can actually do this, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about this at another time. This will only make a difference when we actually are accessing our board matrix. Right, so A1 becomes coordinate zero one right because a corresponds to zero in our map and then we're saying one for a row but a one right zero one corresponds to here right in 2d matrix notation because it goes row column zero indexed so zero right zero with row first column it actually correspond to here Zero with row, first column. Zero row, because it's zero next, one, second column. First row, second column. So we need to change, right, this, right? So A is correct. It represents the zero with column. A represents this zero with column. But one, right, 
one is the seventh row, right? In 2D matrix notation, since we're zero index, so the eighth row is an index of seven. So we need to say, start y is equal to eight minus minus eight minus, so zero one becomes this. We wanted to play this. So eight minus that second coordinate would become zero seven, which would be here. Or seven zero, which we'll worry about in a second. Eight minus start y. Start x. Start y is equal to start y start x. Right? So let's clear this. Let's do this one more time. A1. And we need to cast this element. A1. Right? 7, 0. So A1 is the seventh row, zero with column. So this is the these are the numbers now we can use to actually update to get that starting position. So we want to play, let's say, we're saying A1, which is not a legal move, but let's say we wanted to play E2 to E4, right? E2 to E4 would become, let's just think of that starting square, E2. So E becomes 4. The fourth column, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 2. What's 8 minus 2? 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So that's the coordinate we want. So now we have the right coordinate we want in 2D matrix notation as opposed to chess notation, right? Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, just run through this code yourself without an event because I'm given the nature that this is drunk programming, I'm probably not explaining it the best. Okay. Okay. So now we have the coordinate of the piece that the player wants to move to. Square to play is equal to, let's make this a tuple, start x, start y. Right? Get position of square we want to move piece to. Okay, so we have the starting square. I just paused, which is why you may see a drawing jump because I have to pee. But, so now we have the starting position and it's x, y coordinates in 2D matrix notation as opposed to chess notation. We've converted it from chess notation to programming notation. Now let's get the square that they want to move to. So like I said, right? Let's say, for example, we want to move E2 to E4. This would become 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, right? So 6, 4 to 4, 4, right? In 2D matrix notation or programming notation. So ending square is input into the square you'd like to move your piece to example A3. And x and y is equal to ending square 0, ending square 1, and we can do the same thing, and x is equal to call map, and x, and y is equal to Eight minus int and y 
index and equals and y index print index print and i okay a1 a3 so five zero so a3 should correspond to five zero write the fifth row of the zero with column zero with row fifth column zero one two three four five all right that's right so that's correct so now we have the correct 2d matrix notations for our start and end positions and essentially what we want to do right is when a player let's say they move this pawn to here a2 to a4 the a2 square becomes empty and the pawn now occupies the a4 square right so I can think of a way to do this. Let's say temp is equal to board start x start y board start x start y and I think we initialized this with we created the board to two empty spaces. So let's change it back to two empty spaces And board and x and y is equal to temp, right? Let's see this. And let's make this bigger. Right, so we have our board. Let's say we want to move E2, right, E2, E4. Now our white pawn has moved from E2 to E4. Now we're black. Let's say we want to move E7 to E5. Right now our black pawn has moved us. Now let's say as white, we want to move like G1 to F3. Right now our white knight has moved. Let's say as black for whatever reason, like we play um, d7 to d6. Oh, sorry, d7. Okay, so I'm going to call it here. Let's just do this again. Let's say we move e2 to e4 d7 or e7 to e5 All right let's say we play g1 to f3 and let's say for the reason black plunders and they play g8 to f6 right and now it's as white let's say okay let's play from f3 to e5 right our white knight and then let's say um, black plays from f6 to e4 right so now we have a playable chess game this took us an hour but we have a playable chess game between two players who know how to play chess locally using only Python and in nothing but 100 lines so this video is far longer than I hoped it would be but we have a functional chess game um, definitely a better way to do this so I highly encourage you to to take this as a starting point and just spread your wings and fly into something more optimal that works better maybe as move validation and game checking all the things that we didn't do in this video so this was the first episode of drunk programming um, maybe we'll have more in the future there are some speed bumps along the way but that's sort of expected given that we've been drinking alcohol. So thank you for watching. I'm gonna call it here and I will see you in the next video.